Not that long ago, patients who needed a pacemaker had to endure painful shocks that burned the skin every time their heart needed to beat. The machine that did this to them, although necessary, was inefficiently large and in some cases had to be pushed in a cart. Also, it had to be plugged into the wall, so during power outages, patients had the risk of dying due to heart failure. Then, Earl Bakken, founder of Medtronic, invented the first wearable external transistorized pacemaker. This allowed the patients to have a more enjoyable, safe recovery. This turning point in medical history has saved the lives of many people and sparked a revolution in cardiac science. Before 1957, patients in need of an artificial heartbeat were extremely unfortunate. They were hooked up to a very large version of today's pacemaker invented by Paul Zoll. This pacemaker was powered by an outside electrical source. The shock delivered by this pacemaker was extremely painful and too powerful for use on children. Children had a different type of pacemaker that was so big it had to be carted around. This was very unfortunate because a lot of the patients that needed a pacemaker were babies born with holes in their hearts. Because of the holes, the babies didn't get properly oxygenated blood, giving them a bluish tinge. This earned them the nickname Blue Babies. The babies had to undergo open heart surgery so that the holes could be closed up. In order for them to recover, these babies had to be hooked up to the large, cart-borne pacemaker. In 1949, Earl Bakken and Palmer Hermunsley had started their own business after leaving the Army. They repaired medical equipment at the University of Minnesota Hospital, where Dr. C. Walton Lillyhigh worked as a heart surgeon. Well, we had to start a business, and when I got out of the Army, I, my wife was working in the hospital as a medical technologist, and I would pick her up in the evening and take her home. And when I was there in the evening, they started to ask me if I could repair some of the equipment in the hospital. And I said, sure, I'm taking a course in electrical engineering, and I can repair some of your equipment. And that gave me the idea of starting a company to, to service medical electronic equipment. And so we started the company in a garage with two people, and we did uh, made sales of $8 the first month we were in business. On October 31st, 1957, there was a power outage due to an equipment failure at a Minneapolis power plant. At the time, Dr. Lillyhigh had just finished conducting a life-saving operation on a blue baby. The infant was recovering with the help of a cart-borne pacemaker. When the power went out, the pacemaker failed. Dr. Lillyhigh and the nurses did everything they could to save the small child. Although there was some dispute about whether or not the infant lived, it is most likely that the child did not survive. Inspired by this tragedy, Dr. Lillyhigh sought out his tinkering colleague Earl Bakken and asked him to improve the pacemaker by making it independent of an outside power source. And we sold some recording equipment to the University of Minnesota. And Dr. Lillyhigh wanted to use this equipment that would measure blood pressure and flow between the, the mother or father and the patient and measure the temperature and all other things about the patient. And they, he tried to get an engineer to come into surgery with him, and none of them would, but I, get, I went into surgery with him, and that's how we got acquainted to really go forward and with the pacing. In December of 1957, Earl Bakken completed his mission. He had successfully invented the very first wearable transistorized pacemaker. He made this battery-powered life-saving machine in his garage workshop using the circuitry of a metronome. Before giving it to Dr. Lillyhigh, Bakken tested his brilliant device on a dog. 
After his test succeeded, Bakken gave his pacemaker to Dr. Lilyhai, expecting the medical professional to run some tests. But when Bakken returned to the hospital only a few days later, he saw a patient already wearing the device. He was shocked that Dr. Lilyhai had already used his invention on a young patient. When he asked Lilyhai about this, the doctor said that the invention worked perfectly. Today, it would take years for a medical device to pass FDA testing and to be used in hospitals. I think it would be very hard because it's getting harder and harder with the FDA. At, at the time I made the first pacemakers, the FDA was not taking care of devices. And so it was just a matter of making it and going and using it. Now it can take up to several years to get the, of the FDA approval. When Bakken saw his pacemaker being used on that young boy, it changed his life. He felt empowered being able to save the child's life. Bakken was asked to make more of the legendary pacemakers, not just for Lilyhai, but for hospitals around the country. Bakken's invention saved the lives of blue babies and many other children. This pacemaker was also used on adults. The device put the large, painful pacemakers completely out of use. This allowed for a safer, flexible, more enjoyable recovery. Earl Bakken's pacemaker also served as a template for future inventions in cardiac science, despite its simplicity. Because Bakken was selling more of his pacemakers, his business, Medtronic, co-founded with his brother-in-law, Palmer Hermansley, started becoming more successful. While it was still a small business at the time, this new growth continued and eventually grew into the large medical device company we know today. A few years after Bakken came out with his pacemaker, Wilson Greatbatch invented the first internal pacemaker. Medtronic made a deal with Greatbatch and they worked together to improve and manufacture this new design. Medtronic is a leader in medical technology and their devices have saved many lives. Today, there are about 2 million people that use a pacemaker, including Bakken himself. But our company began to grow, and of course, we sell hundreds of thousands of pacemakers. This year, we will service some 7 million people. Every, every three and a half, wow. every three seconds, someone is being helped by a pacemaker-like device. We make now about 40 devices, and some, many of them go into the head, and many of them go to other parts of the body. But the pacemaker was the start of everything. Patients with insufficient heartbeat used to be hooked up to a large, painful pacemaker that relied on an outside power source. When Dr. Lilyhai asked Bakken to create a better pacemaker after that fateful Halloween night, the result was a turning point in medical history. When Bakken successfully designed the first transistorized pacemaker, he saved the lives of many children and adults. That alone is noteworthy. But beyond saving lives, the invention spurred growth in Medtronic and a collaboration with Great Batch. These events led to growth in one of the largest medical device companies in the world. Without this company, the world of medicine would have taken a much different route. And if the medical world were different, the lives of many people would be different. This event may not be well known, but it was most certainly a turning point in history.